The cortisol is awesome, like when we want it to be. It liberates glucose so that we can fight bears. It liberates fat so that we can run for a long time and run away from bears. It does really cool things, but when it's chronically elevated, it does some really wild things. Now, the signs and symptoms of having high levels of cortisol are somewhat broad. But what I want to be able to do in this video is explain what you might see if you have relatively high levels of cortisol. The best thing to do is go and get a cortisol test. Test that stuff, get the actual data. But if you're starting to wonder, hey, I've been stressed out for a long time, what are some of the things I should be looking for? Hopefully this video can give you some broad guidance. I'm not a doctor, I'm some guy on the internet. But information is information, hopefully it can help you out. Let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video sponsor is Helix. Now if you're looking for a mattress, I'm gonna save you a bunch of time. This is the one. This is the one that my wife and I now can't live without. Like if we go to a hotel or if we go travel somewhere, even if it's a high quality mattress, we just can't wait to get home and sleep on our own bed. Cool thing about Helix is they deliver it right to your doorstep. You unbox it, it's ready in just a couple of hours by the time it completely inflates and does everything. So if you're looking for some different ways to potentially improve your sleep, this could be a good direction for you. I like it because you take a sleep quiz and it helps find the mattress that works best for you. So then I also have my wife take the quiz and it balances it out and says, okay, between what you want, your preferences and your wife, Here's the balance and here's the blend that we go with. So it went with a Midnight Lux in my case. So anyway, definitely recommend you check them out. There's a link down below that'll save you up to $200 off of a mattress plus get you two free pillows. And they also offer a 100 night trials. That way you can try it out, see if it's for you, but also they have a 10 year warranty and totally free shipping, which just sweetens the deal all the more. So go to helixsleep.com slash Delauer and use that link down below. That way you can save up to 200 bucks and also get those two free pillows. So that link is down below. Now let's get to the science. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, what are three like reasons why your cortisol levels might be high? First off, the obvious one you are constantly stressed, right? You're, you're, but the thing is, is that it's just so hard to tell. It's very relative. It's perception based, right? Like my stress might be different from your stress. Bob's stress is different from JR's stress, right? It's just, it's all a whole different relative thing. But when we have consistently high levels of cortisol, then that's when we start creating these feedback loops that might cause sort of these uh, mechanisms within the brain to keep cortisol levels elevated because it's the new norm. Let's not really go into too much detail there. The other piece, it's a little bit more on the clinical side, so we're not gonna really address it too much because it's not my area of expertise, but that is what is called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And sometimes what can happen there is people can actually have an issue in their brain that is actually causing them to pump out more cortisol. There's even conditions like Cushing's disorder, Cushing's disease, that where they just produce more and more cortisol. And then the other situation, a little more still kind of on that subclinical piece, and that is like, the there's different medications that people can take that are anti-inflammatory that can have an indirect effect on cortisol production. So anyway, there's lots of different reasons that it happens, but most commonly it's a stress situation. So what can you expect if your cortisol levels are high? Well, again, full disclaimer, these are pretty broad things, okay? You very well might have some of these and it doesn't necessarily constitute high levels of cortisol. But again, if you're just wondering, hmm, if I connect all these dots, maybe it's something I should look into more. Okay, if you are gaining weight in the face, in the neck, in the abdomen, and in the upper back, disproportionately, there could be an indicator that, yeah, your cortisol levels are high. If your limbs are staying lean, but you're gaining weight around the middle or in the face, that could be an indicator. And the reason is simple. Okay, cortisol is very, has a high affinity for those regions because we have more glucocorticoid receptors within those regions, okay? We also have more of a specific enzyme. Specifically, it's called 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. And this enzyme converts inactive form of cortisol, like cortisone, back into cortisol. And since cortisol is what is called pro-adipogenic, it really triggers the transcription of genes to actually like store fat, more pro-adipogenic. Okay, so if we have more of this enzyme present in these tissues, it takes inactive forms of that cortisol and turns it back into an active form. And the more active form that we have in a given area, the more fat that we store in that area. So since we have more enzyme activity in this area, more glucocorticoid cortisol receptors in this area, that means more cortisol is attracted to this area 
playing its pro-adipogenic fat storing games. So we store more fat in that visceral fat region, in that abdomen, but also, again, in the face, in the neck, and in the upper back. It doesn't mean for sure you have high levels of cortisol, but it is a very, I don't know, there's a lot of MRI scans that look at that kind of stuff. Another one that we have to pay attention to is your mood feeling very altered. Okay, so which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did you get super stressed out and affected your mood, or is your mood getting affected and now it's affecting cortisol? You see, there could actually be both directions going, but as you are exposed to high levels of cortisol and stress, think about it. Your brain chemistry is going to change to adapt to that. If being super hyper stressed out is becoming the new norm, you can expect the brain to potentially change. There's some preliminary evidence that shows that even like hippocampal regions of the brain and even like uh, portions of the brain, the gray matter can change when exposed to chronic stress. And whether that's related to cortisol or the different other kind of neurobiological things that happen as a result of stress, we don't necessarily 100% know yet. It's still being kind of discussed and looked at. But there's this feedback loop, and if you're consistently stressed, then your mood states might change. So you have, okay, I'm storing fat in my face and my abdomen, and then now I'm starting to feel moody all the time. Okay, well, let's look at some other ones. Muscle weakness over time. Now, this can be a hard one to measure, because as we get older, it's not uncommon for us to lose some muscle strength and some muscle size. Okay, so take it with a grain of salt. You can expect to lose a couple percent of strength and muscle sometimes every couple of years as you get older. But if you start finding, okay, wow, I look back, I had this really stressful event in my life, and I just, like, my stress never really balanced out. My workouts have stayed the same, but my, I've just gotten weaker over time. Remember, cortisol is catabolic. Okay, that means that if it's chronically elevated, it's consistently trying to liberate fuel. And if it doesn't always have a fuel to liberate, it's going to find a fuel to liberate, and it's going to do that by breaking down amino acids from your protein into usable glucose for the brain and for just moving your body. Okay, that's going to weaken you. That's going to, you're going to have less muscle, less contractile tissue, less myokines, less overall muscle. So yes, you start factoring this in, it makes sense. This next one is very unique that people don't talk about a lot, and that is, is your skin changing, and are you noticing like your wound healing patterns are different? Not always bad, but different. Just purely hypothetical, pure example. Let's say you used to heal really well in your feet, but now like you get a wound there and it takes three months to heal. Like, again, hypothetical. The point is, you're noticing differences, right? And you're noticing changes in your pigment. You're noticing changes in your skin. Well, there's a whole body of research that has been looking at this. The relationship between the stress in our brain, our neurochemicals, our hormones, and how it affects our skin and how it affects our healing. And there's even other directions you can start talking about the immune system. I'll save that for another video, but perhaps that is playing a role as well. Our skin neurobiology and even our skin microbiome, yes, there's such a thing, our skin microbiome can all be affected by stress. If it's affecting our gut, if it's affecting our bacteria, if it's affecting our skin microbiome, our pigments can potentially change. We can have changes in wound healing. Again, good, bad, ugly, whatever, just different. It's something to be paying attention to. Like, okay, I'm gaining weight in the midsection. I'm feeling weaker. My mood is messed up. And now I'm noticing that my skin feels different it might be time to get a cortisol test. This next one is so important. This goes for men and women. Thinning hair. We know, well, I shouldn't say we know, but it's kind of common, like, just commonly out there that as you get, oh, I'm so stressed out, I'm gonna lose my hair, right? Cortisol levels that are elevated can attack the hair follicle. Now, a very complex mechanism that's going on there that's above my pay grade, but when you start looking at the data, it's pretty interesting. When it attacks the hair follicle like this, it's making it so that the hair doesn't regenerate. It's not necessarily making it so the hair immediately falls out, but you're just not getting that regeneration. So it comes with age, certainly. Those kinds of things change with you know, uh, DHT conversion and all kinds of stuff, specifically in men, but with men and women, high levels of stress can play this role here. And one one of the most important ones that we also have to address is the two-way relationship between cortisol being elevated and our sleep patterns. So then it begs the question, is my sleep pattern screwed up because I'm stressed out or am I stressed out because my sleep pattern is screwed up? And that is a very honest, solid question because what is happening? What could be triggering? And you have to kind of look and work backwards at these different like life events that have occurred that possibly triggered your stress to be a little bit higher. But generally speaking, if your cortisol levels are elevated, think about it. 
you're probably not going to want to be sleeping while you're being chased by a bear. It's kind of evolutionary from a, that perspective, right? So generally, I would suggest, in my personal humble opinion, that you're probably stressed out first. Okay, and then you're creating these feedback mechanisms that are once again disrupting your sleep. Your body is incredibly resilient, and there are very good chances that your body can start getting more efficient at running on less sleep. Doesn't mean that you're going to perform at your best. You might be performing suboptimally, but your body is going to do what it can to do with well, deal with what it's got. Okay, so fat storing around the face, neck, upper back, specifically in the visceral fat, that abdomen pot belly region. Okay, shifts in your mood, okay? Very big one. Okay, thinning hair, another really big one. Muscle weakness over time, another very very important one. Skin changes, okay, and wound healing changes, and then changes in your circadian rhythm and your overall sleep patterns. Hopefully, understanding this can give you a little bit more of a broad context. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and a big thank you once again to today's sponsor, Helix Mattress, and you can check them out down below and save up to 200 bucks. See you tomorrow.